Hey guys, um, in this lesson we will continue solving equations using the quadratic formula, but we will also explore i and how to simplify i to any power using a neat little trick that will allow us to do that quickly every single time. And here's the key to the powers of i. Um, first of all, of course, i to the one power is just i, all right, that's just common sense i squared is negative one okay um, and uh, we could say a little bit more about that i is defined as the square root of negative one so it makes sense that i squared because if we squared both sides okay then that's just going to give us i equals negative one all right because the radical would go away so that's worth memorizing i squared is negative one i to the third power is negative i. Um, we could say a little bit more about that if you wanted to. You could think of i, square, I to the third power as i squared with an extra i left over. All right, i to the third power is i squared times i. But we just decided that um, i squared is negative one. So this would just make negative one times i, which would just be negative i. Or you can just memorize it. Okay, now i to the fourth power is one. Now we can say a little bit more about that. i to the fourth power, you can think of that as i squared times i squared. Um, but we know that i squared is negative one. So that would just be negative one times negative one. So of course that's positive one. Okay, um, or you can just memorize these first four. Now after that, it starts to repeat, okay? Um, so the way that you can know, no matter what power I give you, is um, all you have to do is divide the power by four. If you get 0.25, or which is the same thing as one fourth, of course, um, then that means it's I. If you get 0.5, which is the same thing as one half, then that's i squared. If you get 0.75 or 3 fourths, then you're dealing with uh, negative i. And if you get no decimal at all, that means you're dealing with a multiple of i to the fourth power. So it'll be the same thing as i to the fourth power. Okay, so for example, um, look at problem number one. Well, problem number one is just i squared. So we memorize that that's negative one. So, okay, that's the, an example of what I'm talking about. But for problem number two, if we do um, 14 divided by four, okay, let's see what we get. All right, 14 divided by four. Okay, look at the decimal here. I've got 0.5. All right, so according to our neat little trick here, um, that means it's going to be negative one. So look, i to any power, these are the only four possibilities. They're gonna be i, negative one, negative i, or one. So in this case, um, because of the 0.5, we know it's going to be negative 1. Okay, so we could just put negative 1. All right, just one time, let me show you why this is actually true. And again, everything I'm saying is based on um, these memorized facts that um, we, if we can memorize that i squared is equal to negative 1, you should memorize that, definitely memorize that i to the fourth power is positive one. All right, this is all we really need to, to simplify things. So i to the 14th power, you could think of this as i to the fourth power times i to the fourth power, all right, that's eight so far, times i to the fourth power, that's 12. Um, so how many more are left over? Okay, there's, uh, I got 12 so far, I need 14, so I'll go ahead and switch to 
i squared now. So i to the 14th power is the same thing as i to the 4th power times i to the 4th power times i to the 4th power times i squared. Now remember, i to the 4th power is 1. So this is the same thing as 1 times 1 times 1. And then i squared is negative 1. OK, so it's 1 times 1 times 1 times negative 1. And uh, hopefully you can see that that's just going to be negative 1. Because multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So that just leaves the negative 1. So that's why i to the fourth power is equal to negative 1. All right, but you can just use the shortcut. Um, let's take a break from that for one second and look at problem number 3. Um, remember, if you have a negative under a radical, that is i. Okay, so I want you to be able to do this in one step, but I'm going to show it in two steps just to be really clear. A negative under the radical is i. Uh, because, look, um, you could look at the square root of negative 16 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16, right? And then that would be i radical 16. Um, but what's the square root of 16? 4. And then that i is still there, and we put it on the right. So in the future, though, um, <coughs> excuse me, I would expect you to go um, immediately to 4i. All right, just practice that for a quick second. Um, so look. If I said what is the uh, what's the square root of negative 25, I would expect you to say 5i. What's the square root of negative 49? Say it out loud. That'd be 7i. All right. By the way, if I wanted to do the square root of negative 20, okay, um, the square root of 20 is 2 radical 5. So this would be 2i radical 5. Um, and if I had like the square root of negative 13, something that can't simplify at all, you would just put, um, sorry, there's no negative sign in this. Um, you would just put i root 13, OK? But one more time, if I had the square root of negative 36, what's that? That's 6i, OK? Just a little practice there. All right, now back to our tricks. If I want to do i to the 23rd power, OK, um, as a shortcut, I could see what is 23 divided by 4. 23 divided by 4. All right, you see that 0.75? That 0.75 tells us that we have negative i. OK, so this is going to be negative i. All right, of course, this technique relies on you memorizing this, this chart. OK, so you just have to memorize i to the 1 power, 2 power, 3 power, 4 power. That's going to be i, of course. And then negative 1, right? You should memorize that anyway. And then negative i and 1. And then um, this part sort of goes in order, so that should be easy to, to remember. One fourth, one half, three fourths. Okay, it's getting bigger as as we go. Okay, so in fact, this is like um, you could think of this as one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. Okay, because of the one, two, three, four, so one fourth, two fourth, three fourths, four fourths. But of course, two fourths is one half, and then there's your three fourths, and of course, four fourths is one. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, so let's use our shortcut and do 71 divided by four and see what that's all about. 71 divided by 4. All right, you have the 0.75. That's 3 fourths.
All right, and that 3 fourths reminds me that it's going to be i to the uh, third power. Okay, 3 fourths third power is another way to help you remember it. Okay, I see what I'm saying. All right, let's look at number six. All right, if we want to simplify um, n uh, the square root of negative 200. Now, as soon as you see that negative sign, uh, you know that we're dealing with i. Okay, and you can skip the step if you want, but um, you know, let me show it underneath. But um, so we're going to have i and then the square root of 200. So um, now that the i is out of there, we can do the square root of 200 separately. Okay, so square root of 200, um, that's 10 radical 2. Okay, so we'll have 10 radical 2, and that i just goes right here in the middle. So it'll be 10 i radical 2. By the way, you should be able to, to simplify the square root of 200 without a calculator. Um, you would just go, oh, square root of 200, that's the same thing as the square root of 100 times square root of 2. 200 is 100 times 2. But the square root of 100 is 10. All right, that's why it's 10 radical 2. All right, uh, number 7. We're back to this again. So um, let's use our little shortcut, my friend. What is 176 divided by 4? All right, there's no decimal at all. That means this must be 1. OK, if there's no decimal at all, uh, it, it means it must be 1. All right, let's take a look at number 8. Again, let's use our shortcut. So 312 divided by 4. Let's see what we get. 312 divided by 4. Um, again, that comes out evenly. There's no decimal. All right, since there's no decimal, again, it must be 1. Okay, so that is how we do that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here uh, because we're going to we're about to get into a different type of problem with the finding the discriminant and stating the uh, number and type of solutions. So, I will see you on the next video.